Big Navi is the second generation of AMD's Navi architecture. The first generation was a great improvement over their previous cards, allowing AMD to compete with Nvidia's 2000 series in terms of efficiency and performance, minus hardware support for ray tracing, which AMD's cards did not have. And they only competed up to the level of the GeForce 2070. Had AMD made a bigger Navi card then it might even have beaten the 2080 or 2080 Ti. But with the first generation of Navi, AMD seemed happy just sticking to smaller cards. Fortunately this time around they'll be launching bigger cards, hence the term Big Navi, which means we'll really get to see how AMD's best compares with Nvidia's flagship products. We're also hoping to see hardware support for ray tracing to really make it a direct competitor to Nvidia's 3000 series of cards. I expect ray tracing support is likely since this is the technology that's powering the new consoles, which do happen to feature it. And here in 2020 it's about time AMD's cards supported it. Ray tracing in games is only going to get more common and important, and not supporting it this time around will make Nvidia's offerings a lot more appealing and future proof. Also we can expect a 50% improvement in efficiency per watt, which is amazing because AMD was already on par with Nvidia for this, and with the 3000 series not showing much of an improvement, AMD might even get the advantage this time around. And AMD has already dropped the first performance numbers. At the end of AMD's recent Zen 3 presentation, their upcoming GPU lineup was teased. We didn't get a huge amount of details, ray tracing wasn't covered, but we did get a hint at how fast the new big Navi cards will be. The big Navi preview started with an unimpressively jerky showcase of Borderlands 3 running at 4K. I wouldn't worry too much about this, the lag could be from the limited bitrate on the YouTube video stream, I don't think they'd show it if it was actually that stuttery and jerky, at least I'd hope not. The interesting bit came just after, when they showed these performance figures at 4K. Borderlands 3 at 61fps, Gears of War 5 at 73, and Call of Duty Modern Warfare at 88. As expected, this indicates that Big Navi is designed to be a high-end card capable of 4K gaming. The question is, how good is it compared with previous Navi cards? And how will it compete with Nvidia's 3000 series? Luckily, all three of these games have been benchmarked with these cards already, so we can see roughly how Big Navi compares with them give or take a bit. Borderlands 3 first. It was annoying that AMD showcased this using badass quality settings, since most benchmarks for it online are only done at Ultra, which is a few percent easier to run. The previous Navi card, the 5700XT, could run this game at 33fps. But this result was only at Ultra, so in reality I expect Big Navi to deliver almost double the performance of AMD's previous generation cards in this game. That's a great leap and it's always good when a company can deliver a new flagship product. On the Nvidia side of things, there's a bit more competition. The previous gen flagship, the 2080 Ti, scored around 44 FPS, making Big Navi about 39% faster and almost exactly the same speed as Nvidia's 3080 card. Matching this card is great for AMD, although the 3090 is there to prevent AMD from reclaiming the ultimate performance crown. It's worth noting that Borderlands 3 is a game that has been developed in close collaboration with AMD. I expected to show Big Navi in the best possible light, so maybe the performance here is more of a best case than an average case. But still, it's a good start for the card and it shows that it's a viable competitor to the GeForce 3080 in this game. The next game they showed was Gears of War 5. This is another game based on the Unreal 4 engine, and another title that AMD worked closely with. Again, Big Navi was almost exactly double the speed of the 5700XT, beat the 2080 Ti by about 20%, and is unfortunately a few frames slower than the GeForce 3080. I say unfortunate because that's the card that people will compare Big Navi to, so it's a shame that even in AMD's own results it appears to be a tad slower than Nvidia's card. It's obviously way too soon to say with any certainty where this card's performance will land, I'm only going off the three benchmark numbers that AMD themselves have provided. But from them I wouldn't be surprised if, in most games, Big Navi was a few percent slower than the GeForce 3080. And if that happens, it puts AMD in a tough position. Do they accept that it's slower, price it accordingly and allow Nvidia's performance crown to go uncontested? Or do they overclock Navi to the brink to try and match Nvidia, throwing away any power efficiency advantage they might have had? Of course, maybe there's more to these results than meets the eye, done deliberately to keep Big Navi's true performance a secret until its official unveiling. But I doubt it. I don't expect AMD to be playing any next-gen mind games here, they haven't done that in the past. Right now, Nvidia's cards are already out and people are buying them. AMD urgently needs to get their own cards out, and at a competitive price. Until then, they need to give buyers a reason to wait, and not to immediately go out and to buy Nvidia cards. I think that's why they've teased performance numbers early. 
is to show people that Big Navi can handle 4K gaming and that there is reason to wait until the pricing is announced before choosing which graphics card to buy. It's also to slow the hype train by giving people a rough idea of what level of performance to expect so as to avoid disappointment closer to release. And last we see Call of Duty Modern Warfare, and how good Big Navi is here depends on whether it's running with ray tracing on or not. If it's running with ray tracing then that's an amazing result, putting it on par with the GeForce 3090 and suggesting that AMD's hardware ray tracing is superior to Nvidia's. And if it's not using ray tracing then it's still faster than the 2080 Ti, but not by a lot, and it will probably be beaten by the 3080, which I can't find any non-ray trace benchmarks for in this game. In fact, this game apparently doesn't have a proper benchmark mode, so I'm not even sure how directly comparable any results for this will be anyway. If I had to guess, I'd say that these results are without ray tracing, since it would be more in line with the other results that we've seen. In conclusion, from AMD's own numbers, in terms of raw gaming performance, Big Navi scores similarly or slightly below that of the GeForce 3080. We don't know how the ray tracing performs, nor do we know how efficient the card is. It could be that it manages this with way less power draw, or from a substantially smaller card which would be great news for AMD. This might all be revealed come the Navi presentation on the 28th of October. I'd be very surprised if we didn't see at least some mention of ray tracing there. Right now we only have Nvidia's hardware to base the technology on, and to see what sort of performance impact it brings about. It could very well be that AMD's cards handle it entirely differently. Of course I'm hoping that it's done more effectively, but it could also be the case that it's not so good. And then there's the topic of DLSS. I'm hoping that AMD has been working on something similar because I've been very impressed with that technology so far. It enables some exciting possibilities. How should we feel about Big Navi competing with the 3080 instead of the 3090? I think it was expected, but at the same time it is disappointing that Big Navi doesn't look set to steal the performance crown from Nvidia. It shouldn't matter to most people, but at the same time it does as it would have done wonders for AMD's reputation. By being a bit slower than Nvidia's best, Big Navi looks set to repeat the same story that we've seen so many times before, where Nvidia comes out with the fastest cards, then AMD's come out slightly later and with slightly less performance. It's just hard to get as excited about AMD's cards when Nvidia have already been there and done that, and time after time, Nvidia reaps the rewards that come with being first and fastest. I feel like Nvidia knew what to expect with Big Navi. They called the 3080 their flagship and had the 3090 there just as insurance to ensure that they retained the performance crown. I don't think the 3090 was ever intended to sell in large quantities. For most people, the 3080 is about as high as it's sensible to go. So let's hope that Big Navi has what it takes to match or at least come close to that card, and for the architecture to provide attractive products all the way down the stack. Expect new high VRAM cards at the high end? and renewed competition at the $300 price point, and hopefully lower still, because the $200 price point has been stagnant for far too long. It's been a while since AMD's had an answer for every sub-$1000 graphics card on the market, so Big Navi should at least provide that. It's really had to do so much, to catch up with Nvidia's performance lead, as well as to provide hardware support for ray tracing, and possibly even some kind of DLSS-like upscaling. AMD already has fidelity effects, but it's pretty safe to say that Nvidia's DLSS 2.1 is better. To assume that AMD could match or even surpass Nvidia in all of these areas in a single generational leap would have been nice, but well into the realms of wishful thinking. I expect for there to be all kinds of juicy rumours and speculation before release, but as always, take everything with a pinch of salt, wait for benchmarks, and remember to always pick the best option for your price point. It's in your best interest that Big Navi's as good as it can be, but hopefully this video has given you an idea for what to expect and what might be interesting to look out for come release.